Hey, welcome back guys. So today, I wanted to try something a little bit different, and that's running Windows Vista on somewhat newer hardware than there was back in its time. As you can see here, we're running Windows Vista Ultimate 64-bit with Service Pack 2 on a Phenom 2 X6 1035T, and we have it overclocked to just over 3.5 gigahertz. We also have 8 gigabytes of DDR3 running around 1800 megahertz. Uh, the CPU Northbridge is also overclocked to about 2700. Also installed is a Radeon HD 7790 for the GPU. We have a few benchmarks and games installed and we're ready to test this system out, so let's get right into it. We're going to start out with some synthetic benchmarks, and first up is 3 Mark 3 This benchmark is obviously made to test much older hardware, so this is probably going to be a pretty high score. And then next we're going to run 3 Mark 05, also an older DX9 benchmark. I don't know what scores you can expect from 2005 hardware, but here's the score that we got along with details for that run. And the last DX9 benchmark is 3 Mark 06. And again you can see that uh, the system scored which is probably pretty high with the details that you see here. So this next benchmark is 3D Mark Vantage and it is a DX10 benchmark to test Windows Vista systems. I don't know what a comparative score would be on other hardware from the era, but this is the score that we got. Both the CPU and the GPU scores are both over 18,000. So now we can go ahead we can jump into some games and uh, first up is Return to Castle Wolfenstein. This is an older DX9 game from 2002 and at 1080p with all settings as high as they can go we averaged 89 FPS which is almost a cap of 91. So I'm not going to include the 1% 0.1% lows for any of these benchmarks because for some reason uh, they start off really low as soon as I start the benchmark recording with Afterburner. Uh, but you can track the frame rate and the uh, frame times in the on-screen display. Next up we have Hitman Blood Money and this is also a DX9 game from 2006 and at 1080p with the highest settings possible with 8xAA and 16xAF uh, we averaged 115 FPS. And The Witcher, the, the first one, is another DX9 game from 2007, and at the highest settings with 16xAF and 4xAA, the average FPS was 77. And next up we have Flat Out 2 from 2006, also DX9, and this game will run on pretty much anything, so it's no surprise that the average FPS was the actual FPS cap of 60. And now we have Fear from 2005, and at 1080p with maximum settings, 16xAF and 4xFSAA, uh, we just ran an in-game benchmark.
This game was pretty demanding on hardware back in 2005, but with this setup we easily averaged 134 FPS with the built-in benchmark. So we might as well check out Fear 2 next, the follow-up from 2009 and still a DX9 game. And at 1080p with maximum settings, 4x FSAA and 16x AF, uh, we still manage an average FPS of 155. And you can see the very low 0.1% lows is an issue with a lot of these older games. Uh, when they autosave, it'll tank that portion of the benchmark. So that's just another reason why I haven't bothered to include those numbers. And of course we have to test the original Far Cry from 2004, and at 1080p with the highest settings with 8xAF and 4xAA, uh, our average FPS was 182. And here's a game I just added recently. This is Deuce X Human Revolution, and this is a game from 2011, and it'll run on either DX11 or DX9, but with Vista, it of course defaults to DX9. At 1080p, with all the settings on high, uh, after the end of just a few minutes of gameplay, we had an average FPS of 61. So moving up to 2012, we have Alan Wake's American Nightmare, which is also a DX9 game, and uh, it's running at 1080p with the highest preset, and for some reason, the benchmark wouldn't record, but you can see by the FPS counter, we did average in the 40s, which is really not too bad for this game in the high settings. And we can't forget Half-Life 2, and at 1080p with the highest settings, 16xAF, 8xMSAA, our average FPS was 281. Okay, so at this point, everything that we tested was DX9 only, but there are some games that were from the Windows Vista era that did take advantage of DX10, and with Windows XP, you just can't use that option. Fortunately, we can test the difference in 2008's Far Cry 2. Using the highest settings of 1080p, we're going to run the benchmark first in DX9. And as you can see here, the average FPS was 84, which is pretty good. So using the exact same settings, only selecting DX10, we're going to run it again. And this time you can see we got an average FPS of 95. So there's definitely a performance improvement with the option DX10, at least in this example. 
So up next we have Crisis, and that will default to DX9 and Windows XP, but defaults to DX10 and Vista. You can force DX9 and Vista, but DX10 is definitely preferred. And at 1080p with medium settings, high texture and water quality, motion blur and AA off, our average FPS is 58, which is really nothing to complain about when you're referring to Crisis. That must be the jamming station. So Windows Vista gets a bad rap, and to be honest, I personally really like Vista. It seems that a lot of people that will build a Windows XP PC use hardware that is perfectly capable of running Vista as well, but they'll still choose Windows XP. Personally, I like the option of being able to run all the XP era games, plus later games using DX10, and I also always like the look of Vista better. I run this exact same version on my other PC with Service Pack 2 and I have yet to have an issue with it, but it does come down to a personal preference and to each their own. And normally I would not use this particular hardware for Windows Vista build, I mean it was pretty much overkill, but the results did seem to partially justify it. So hopefully someone found this interesting. You guys take care and I'll see you all soon.